This is our Forex blog video for September 13th, 2012. And like we do most days, we start with our currency meter to find the strongest ones to buy and the weakest ones to sell. The only secret to trading is having small losses and bigger wins. And by using the currency meter, you're, you're getting our statistical analysis of how strong and weak each currency is. We have the real-time trend strength on the top, 15-minute trend, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Obviously, the more time frame trends that line up, uh, the higher that your odds are. And then you can also use our sortable currency meter to always see the strong ones on the top and the weak ones on the bottom. So you can see the New Zealand, Australian, CAD are strongest, dollar, Swiss, and yen uh, in the pound are the weakest. So the dollar is the weakest, New Zealand, Australian are the strongest. Uh, the Australian, however, has a daily trend that was down until about one, its monthly trend was down, the weekly trend mixed, shifted to up around one. So basically between the two, you would have chosen the New Zealand and also with the CAD. So earlier today, you can see the Swiss was weak uh, for most of the time frames, except for the weekly and monthly. Uh, you could trade uh, the New Zealand against the Swiss. This is not a currency that we typically leave running. Uh, and so some of our real time tools won't work, but you can get a feel for you know how strong or weak each currency is your your odds of catching a big win are much higher when you know one's super weak and the other one's super strong you can see from the low to the high this went up 100 pips and basically there's two methods that we use to get into our trades once we identify a strong trend we either buy a pullback or in this case a multi-hour uh, rectangle pattern breakout is very high probability and you can see this went up 10, 20, 30, 40 pips here. Usually I give it a little bit more time to pull back um, after it makes a move up. So I would have probably bought right here and probably had a small win. Bought again right here and bought again right here. Um, and we also tend to use range charts rather than five minute charts. So the, uh, the dollar uh, regained its weakness a little bit around seven and it had brief amounts of strength for an hour. But when all the longer time frame trends are down, you know, after seeing an hour, hour and a half of strength, it's pretty safe to assume that the downtrend will continue, which happened a little bit before 11. Uh, so let's take a look at, you know, looking at the New Zealand dollar to buy right before 11. And so we'll scroll back over. First of all, this is the point of control of the previous day. It's the price most actively traded. In the green and red mark where 68% of yesterday's trading activity happened. When it's above the point of control, it's light more likely to go up. And especially when it's above the previous day's uh, value area high, it's also very likely to go up. So when I pull back to the hourly right here and couldn't really go underneath it, pretty decent place to buy. And you also have you know a multi-hour sideways range breakout here as well. And Again, after it makes a big move, I'm usually a little bit hesitant to buy the first pullback. I would have probably got in here and lost. Found support at the previous month's high, which is very bullish. Buy signal happened right here. Went up about 10 pips. And then you also had the same exact thing happen. Uh, you have a multi-hour uh, sideways consolidation. Kind of a wedge pattern where volatility is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Those breakouts of those are very high probability. Went up 10, 20, 30 40 pips. And most of the time, our upper 3.0 band is going to be the end of the move. So if you're a really aggressive counter trend trader, you can start to get in very lightly right near the band and scale in progressively so that, you know, usually price only has to move back. I try to scale into trades uh, so that if it goes five to seven pips my way, eventually I will get out of the trade at break even. And if it, obviously nice trades like this that shoot back 20, 30 pips, I would have probably, just for example's sake, uh, maybe sh shorted two lots here. And I'm also a very heavy uh, FIB user, so I would always draw that on there first. Came right up to the, the 3.0 band. So I would have probably got into this trade here at 68, maybe with one lot, two more lots here at 73. And then the next, luckily the next bar immediately came my way, so I only would have had three lots on this one. Uh, I scale in. You know, that's probably a lot of lots to some people. I scale into up to 10 to 20 lots full. So I prepare myself, uh, depending on the momentum, 
uh, you know, for that eventuality. Also, I want to see how many days up this currency. You can see it kind of went up a lot, went up again, went up again. This from this whole swing from here to here, I want to see where that is. And the 1.618 is up here. That's my maximum line in the sand. 86 would be pretty much the level. If I was doing a counter trend on this, I would not expect it to break. So, you know, that being the case, uh, after seeing where those fib areas are, uh, I probably would have put two lots on here, uh, maybe three more, five total uh, in this. I always try to, and if I sometimes I get into trades without doing the fib analysis, and I'll get in smaller because you don't know. But 86 would have been a mile line in the sand. It probably would not have went above that, and if it did, it might have went sideways for two to five hours and then pull back enough to let me out of the trade at break even or small win. That's how I handle the kind of trend trades. Because a lot of times during the U.S. session, the market's already gone up too much. And that's, you know, again, one of the reasons why I've been in these 3.0 bands. The, the green level is pretty much the likely line in the sand. Here's the uh, Australian dollar, just so you can see this. Um, let's scroll this out a little bit. Notice the green band on the bottom here. Uh, the green band at the high was right here around 78. And, you know, again, if you get scale into a trade, it did pull back enough to allow you out of that trade at break even. A small win. Let's see if we have any more bands getting hit. Here's uh, the lower band being hit uh, today in the uh, pound yen. And, you know, again, the reason I use these bands is because it's a wonderful way of getting into a nice counter trend trade. If I would have bought down here, I might have only had one or two lots, uh, but it went up 30 or 40 pips real quick and, and almost immediately my way. Uh, but I scale in the trades because you never know. One day out of five, one day out of ten, you know, on in probably the most two days out of ten, you're going to get a market maybe moving maximum of 30 pips outside these bands. But almost, you know, it rarely ever happens. And if the market's up too much, it's risky to buy at the highs or sell at the lows.